Hello again, I am Blunty and I have hit something of a conundrum today because today I had planned on presenting a review of an iPhone app that I've been testing out for about a week now. It is called Pro HDR and as the name might suggest what it does is take HDR photographs with your iPhone. Boom! Stop you right there. Just before we get to the rest of the video, we're actually talk about the HDR apps. Some of you out there might be wondering what the hell HDR photography is. Well, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. And what it basically does is try and get cameras to behave a little more like our human eyes do. Our human eyes have a magnificent, what they call, dynamic range, which means we can, when we look at something, we can see very, very bright stuff, we can see very, very dark stuff, and we can see it pretty well we get there's a big range from light to dark that we can comprehend we can see most cameras however have a lot more trouble with the dynamic range and you've probably seen this yourself when you're using your camera phone and stuff if you pointed at something say uh, you take a picture of a building and you're, you're you expose for the building so you can see all that lovely brickwork or whatever you're taking a picture of and you can see the sky completely blows out you lose all detail in the sky it just goes white you can't see the blue or the clouds or anymore it just goes white because it's exposing for that darker part of the image what hdr does taking a bunch of different exposures so you spokes for the bright stuff you expose for the dark stuff and then you mush those pictures together into one image and so you can see all the details in the shadows but you, the, all your highlights are still crisp and detailed there as well and you can get some magnificently beautiful looking photos with this. You can also get, take it to an extreme, it looks really surreal because you can see right into the deep dark shadows, you can see right into the bright stuff, even you know beyond what you could really see with your eye and some ph photographers are a bit against that because it's not representing what's really there and eh, it's a whole stupid artistic debate. But HDR, as I like to call it, photography, is, is just another tool in your belt for creating images that give off a certain mood or give off a certain impression or maybe you just want to capture all the detail that's there you want to see the sky behind that building instead of a big white blue me out box and just enhance that HDR and that's what the, the, the apps and stuff I'm going to be talking about actually do. The conundrum I have hit, however, is in the recent Apple keynote address thing where they launched the new iPods and the new iPod Touch with the cameras on it and all that sort of stuff. Steve Jobs also announced that uh, the iPhone OS, iOS 4.1, would be released, well, in a couple of days when I'm recording this, actually. And one of the things he talked about that was included in that update is built-in HDR photography. So you don't need a separate app to do HDR anymore. And I went, I've clearly wasted a week reviewing an app that is instantly and, and absolutely redundant now. If it's built into the camera app on the iPhone 4, what's the point of having a separate app? But then I got my hands on the Gold Master Developers version of iOS 4.1, which I installed on my phone, and I discovered that the built-in HDR, while a lot faster to take a photograph, it's just one button, press one click, it does it automatically, boom, it's kind of cool. Whereas the, the uh, Pro HDR app that I've been using, it takes two separate photographs, then merges and then saves them, and then you got a bunch of sliders to fit around with, you got a lot more control there, but all well, that control pays off because the Pro HDR app is a lot better than the built-in HDR coming with iOS 4.1. The only problem I have is Pro HDR is horribly broken by iOS 4.1 and it just doesn't work anymore so I can't actually do a side-by-side -side direct comparison. But just for the sake of doing a direct comparison I'm going to show you a couple of photographs now that are taken in the same location. The lighting is a bit different but you can still tell there's a massive difference between this photograph which was taken with Pro HDR hmm, and this photograph which is taken with iOS 4.1 built-in HDR photography. There is a huge difference. The Pro HDR app still takes far better HDR photos than the built-in stuff does. The built-in stuff does it faster, so it's a lot more handy if you're just doing stuff nice and quick and simple, but if you're taking a photograph as opposed to a snapshot, you're still going to want to use a separate app like Pro HDR, which is a superb, the best. I tried out several different applications. Pro HDR is the best HDR application that I have found on the iPhone so far. Because you can do it manually, you can take two separate photographs manually, then tell it to merge them. You can even pick photos out of your, your library and merge them after the fact. Or you can tell it to do it automatically and you just point at something, you press the button, it analyzes the scene, picks the light bits, picks the dark bits, analyzes, takes two pictures, then merges them, then gives you some sliders so you can tweak it a little bit. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant app. So there you go, I didn't quite waste a week of my time fooling around with this Pro HDR app. It turns out that it is still worth buying these apps and the people who make these apps just haven't been... Mm. I'm constantly worried that if they build something that's awesome, Apple, Apple are going to do what Twitter is, is doing. And every time they see someone else doing something awesome with their service, they go, yeah, okay, we'll steal that idea and make their business model redundant. But no, that hasn't happened here. Pro HDR, remember it, go buy it now if you've got an iPhone, go experiment with it because you can take some spectacularly 
beautiful photographs with it and I love it. So I've been Mlati, still am, thanks for watching, and <laughs> I'll catch you next time. Why do I keep saying that? I've been Blunty. Well, I've, I've been Blunty all the way through the video, but now I can go back to being Nate, perhaps. Ooh, meta.